recently I took delivery of this wrecked bike. It looks a lot worse than what it is. There was a crack in the engine, so I had to learn how to take a motor out by myself for the very first time and also take apart that said motor and also find somebody to fix and weld that said motor. And before I can put it together, we have to do this. It's finally time to put this motor back together and I ran into the idea of having to keep these parts clean or at least clean the crankcase, the various gears, the pistons, all of this before I put this motor back together. Because keeping a motor clean as you're putting it back together is really important. Let me show you why. What you're seeing right here is my workbench that I do all of my, I guess, intricate stuff with my hands. <laughs> and then over here is the motor that we're gonna be putting on that desk that we had to tear apart to get all the way down to the bottom of the crankcase so we can have this welded and fixed. But now that this has been sitting here, you can see up top from the accident that this bike was in, all of the dust. And also as we get in here, yeah, you see all the dust that's settling in here. We gotta get this out and also clean these gasket areas so we don't have any leaks later. So you think, okay, cool, Brandon. All you gotta do is just take some brake cleaner and you know clean up those gasket areas or scrape some of it off scrape some of it off but let me show you where the rest of the motor is in these boxes are various components from balancer shafts to the cylinder heads they're all in these boxes and of course i've tried to keep debris out of these boxes but that's just not going to happen so yeah that's where the rest of the motor is oh but it gets even better let me show you where the crankshaft is right down here there's the crankshaft and the pistons i know some people are going to be freaking out that i have the crankshaft and the pistons just laying there but i promise you they're just lightly sitting down there and i was nice enough to put a little shop towel under that but the point is these parts all need to be clean i guess worst case i have like a bug inside of it or something but it hasn't been there that long where bugs have just collected but the point is i gotta get this stuff clean i recently had this desk put in and i even took well this bike's back now i had another bike in here and that where all those parts are on that was originally over here so i took those bikes out of here temporarily while i put this desk here and it allowed me to be able to have something to rest parts on and take parts uh, or at least dis disassemble parts. That's how we were able to disassemble this motor versus having to do it on the floor like I've done things in the past. What's funny is that even after I clean the surface of this desk before and after I do anything on it, it still tends to somehow get some type of particle on it and it just makes the whole idea of trying to keep this thing clean, just it just goes out the window. Let me show you. So I'm just gonna start my hand and just go like this. Look at all that dirt that's on my fingertips. And even worse, if I get even closer, look at that. These are particles from something. I don't know exactly what, but look at that. We cannot have that inside of that motor. This would be my first time rebuilding a motor. Actually, this is my first time taking one apart too. So we're gonna try to keep all of those little particles out as much as we can because more likely it's going to be impossible to keep this thing 100 percent clean but if there's particles like that we're going to try to keep them out because the oil passage areas in the motor where you know oil gets sucked up sucked up and it, it goes through the motor if any of those passages are blocked by those particles basically you're going to have possibly engine issues oil is not getting to where it needs to and yeah you can possibly have in engine failure it's kind of obvious right so Here's my solution to trying to keep this clean while I do it. Before I show you guys that solution, I did want to show you one of these oil passage areas. That right there, that is one of those pieces that we don't want to get blocked. And also you can see on the cylinder mating surface, you can see there's some stuff like that. We got to get up the RTV and just clean that up so we get a good seal from the gasket and also you can see right here stuff like that we gotta get all of that out because we don't want that to get sucked up in the oil to handle my surface to try to keep it clean i picked up this roll of paper that i'm going to use to sit the motor on and 
Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna use that. Yeah, we got. See, I I didn't even see that. Look at that. I didn't even see that. The truth is, is that we don't all have the money to have this perfectly clean facility where we can clean off parts and you know store them in a controlled environment. A lot of us don't have garages like I'm grateful to have here. So, you know, we have to kind of get creative on how we can get the job done regardless. Because if I didn't have this table, trust me, I would have had that motor on the flow, taking it apart. And I would have put it back together on the flow if I had to. I know somebody going to say it. I know somebody going to say it. Brandon, you need a real knife. That ain't no knife, but get what? Get what, though? That exacto blade. That exacto blade get it done. Okay, maybe. Yes. Kinda. Half done. Oh, there we go. See, look at that. Exacto blade. Booyah. It's actually it's too wide for the table. That is okay. That's perfectly fine. Look at this. All right, now that I got that set up, I'm going to take this side of the crankcase and put it on the table. And that is essentially what I got. I tucked this behind it. And again, it's not elegant, but the whole point is for us to kind of keep, you know, some of that surface level dirt off of the crankcase. I paid about $14 for that roll of paper from Home Depot. And the beauty of it is when it gets too contaminated, I can just rip it off, put another sheet down and start over and if you're not doing anything motor related like me and you still need something to sit stuff on if you don't want it sitting directly on the floor it's the same thing so 15 bucks for that roll works out beautifully let me get this oh okay i'm gonna i'm gonna show off for you guys i totally got this i totally got this okay unfortunately these gloves are not gonna work this time because they get dirty really quick and they're already dirty from prior jobs. So I'm gonna have to use plastic gloves to work on this. If it wasn't for the particles and contaminating the motor as I'm trying to do this for my very first time, maybe the next few times I won't be as you know cautious about it, but I really hate using gloves that are disposable because it just seems wasteful to me. I'm not like this big, like I'm, I'm not a tree hugger. I love nature and I love saving trees, but I do like using, you know, equipment that I can use over and over and over again that doesn't have like a one time use. But in this case, the plastic gloves are going to come in handy and making sure that, you know, we don't contaminate the motor. So, yeah, that's how I feel about it. We got motor check surface to sit motor on check, double check, uh, carb cleaner, shop towels, gloves. The only thing I don't have is like a brush, but honestly, I think I'll be able to rub. See like that. I'll be able to rub kind of most of this away. This bike, this bike's motor is not super old. It's only got like 3,100 miles on it. So a lot of these, you know, gaskets are still kind of not fresh, but they're not like 50,000, a hundred miles stuck on. So I'm just going to take this, rub it by hand, and then we're going to clean it. But first I do have to address something. Well, I don't think it really matters. I'm going to take those two broken bolts that are inside of the frame mounting piece for the motor on the crankcase. I'm gonna drill those out and I guess clean the motor again. I don't know, I'll, I'll probably clean it, drill them out, or maybe drill them out and then clean it. But either way, those still have to come out. One right there and one right there. That one's deep in there. That one might be a little bit of trouble, but you can see right here, this is where the impact uh, happened and that's what caused that this piece that you're looking at pushed up and that's what caused the crack right here that they welded for me. So I think the weld, other than me cleaning like, you know, all the debris and stuff, I think the welds are clean. I don't think I'm going to have to shave any of that down. But yeah, I, I think we're good to go to start, you know, cleaning it up a little bit. So that is my plan before I put the Thunderstroke back together to, you know, clean it and keep the, I guess, the area somewhat clean. Let me know down below what cleaning processes you all use for aluminum blocks. That's, Cast aluminum is not steel, it's not iron. So you have to be very careful when you're cleaning the surface versus trying to take like a razor tool. You can scuff up the surface. 
let me know what you guys are doing down below and i hope this these few tips maybe the paper helps somebody and uh whenever you do your projects maybe that can come in handy so yeah here's another video for you to watch and as always thanks for listening to my story and if you're subscribed which i hope you are see you in the next one i'm about to go clean up well the motor and drill out some stuff <laughs> peace